Welcome back. In this video segment, we're going to talk about four quadrant motor operation. And I wanted to put this video segment earlier in the week because a little bit later in this week, you're going to get your first design project. And in that design project, you're going to have to design a motor controller or a motor drive that will be able to control or drive a DC motor in all four quadrants. So having a good understanding of four quadrant motor operation, I think is, is helpful for that design project. Let's look at the overview of where we're going to go with the, this video segment. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about first is uh, what's called instantaneous rota rotational mechanical power. It is very similar to uh, instantaneous electrical power, you'll see. I want to talk about passive sign convention as it applies to a rotating system or a rotating machine. And again, it'll be analogous to passive sign convention we use for power when we look at electrical devices. And then finally, we'll touch on the four different quadrants of operation for a motor. So let's look at instantaneous mechanical power. The instantaneous mechanical power for a rotational machine, little piece of T, is equal to the instantaneous torque that the machine provides times the instantaneous angular velocity. So that's the equation. If we look at the machine, and let me attach a motor here. I'm going to put a DC motor driving this machine. And it's rotating at omega t. Our DC motor has to apply some torque to, to obtain that rotation. So the mechanical, instantaneous mechanical power for rotational motion is equal to the instantaneous torque times the instantaneous angular velocity. Next, let's look at the passive sign convention as it applies to rotating mechanical energy, if you will. If our instantaneous power is greater than zero, then the rotating machine And in this case, it's a motor, is absorbing power or energy. If P sub T is less than zero, The motor is providing energy. And I'm assuming we're looking at a motor and the energy is going to be an electrical source providing that energy. There's two ways that the instantaneous power for the DC motor could be greater than zero. So that would be if the instantaneous torque was greater than zero or positive, and the instantaneous angular velocity was greater than zero, then their product, which is the instantaneous power, would also be greater than zero. The other case is when the instantaneous torque is less than zero and the instantaneous angular velocity is less than zero, then the instantaneous power will also be greater than zero. The two cases in which the instantaneous power is less than zero or the motor is providing energy back to a, an electrical source or providing electrical energy back to the system is when either the instantaneous torque is less than zero and our instantaneous angular velocity is greater than zero or when the instantaneous torque is greater than zero and the instantaneous angular velocity is less than zero. For those two cases, the instantaneous power will also be less than zero. Now let's look at uh, what's called four quadrant operation, and we can see where these different cases occur. On this graph, we plot torque on the horizontal axes, and we plot angular velocity on the vertical axes. 
in quadrant one, we show a motor and we show positive torque and positive angular velocity. And positive torque is counterclockwise in my frame of reference. I'm assuming we are torquing or twisting about the z-axis. And if we use the right-hand rule, our thumb will point in the positive direction and we take our fingers and curl. And you see if we point our thumb in positive z, our right-hand fingers will curl in a counterclockwise direction. And that indicates positive torque and positive angular velocity. To a certain extent, it doesn't matter so much as long as we are consistent in how we handle what we consider positive torque and positive angular velocity. So for my, my frame of reference, we're going to use counterclockwise rotation for positive. And as you can see up here in quadrant one, our instantaneous power is greater than zero. This quadrant is also called forward motoring. Now let's go over to quadrant two. In quadrant two, our torque is now reversed. Our torque is less than zero. Here's quadrant two. Our torque is less than zero. However, our angular velocity is greater than zero. The product of those two is going to be less than zero. So that means our motor is going to be providing electrical energy back. Oftentimes, if we can't do regenerative braking, we have to absorb this energy in forms of heat through a resistance of some type. This quadrant is called forward braking. Now let's go to quadrant three. In quadrant three, our torque is negative, a clockwise rotation. Our angular velocity is negative. It's also in a clockwise rotation. Our instantaneous power is greater than zero, so the device is absorbing electrical energy. Passive sign convention. This this quadrant is called reverse motoring. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, we'll find that we have our torque is positive, our angular velocity is negative, and I have the wrong arrow on the torque. Let me fix that. Our arrow should be right there. And in quadrant four, we see that we have torque is positive, angular velocity is negative, our instantaneous power is also negative, and this is called reverse braking. And in this, in this quadrant, our motor is providing energy back to the system. If we are braking, uh, we could do regenerative where we could possibly recapture that, that energy or we just lose that energy in the form of heat if it's uh, some form of resistive braking. So those are the four quadrants of operation for a motor. Uh, let's touch on the key points. We went over the instantaneous rotational power, which is equal to the instantaneous torque times the instantaneous angular velocity. Um, we looked at positive instantaneous power, and uh, when it is positive, it indicates that the device is absorbing electrical energy. And when our instantaneous power is negative, it indicates that the device is providing electrical energy. Again, similar to passive sign convention for electrical devices. Finally, we looked at the four different quadrants uh, for our, our motor operation, forward motoring, forward braking, reverse motoring, and reverse braking. And that's going to be important as you design a four quadrant motor driver, you're going to have to look at how you handle current. Current is proportional to torque for a motor and then looking at the voltage applied to the armature. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was a good overview for you of four quadrant motor operation. So if you need additional information, there's a plethora of topics out on the internet on four